Welcome to ES310 Lesson 8. Today we're going to be reviewing the material from Lessons 6 and 7 by looking at three new examples, one in the rectangular coordinate system, one in the normal tangential coordinate system, and one in the cylindrical coordinate system. To see the content for the, this lesson, uh, check out Hebler's Dynamics Test Chapter 13 or review Lessons 6 and 7. As a quick review, these are the equations we've been working with over the last two lessons. In the rectangular system, we're using the xyz coordinates that we're most familiar with. We sum forces in the x, y, and z directions, and those forces are equal to the mass times the acceleration in the appropriate direction. The accelerations are just the second derivatives of the positions for each of those directions. We use rectangular coordinates primarily when we have straight line motion or projectile motion, where we understand the, the accelerations or the velocities or the positions as moving along one of these coordinate directions. When we're moving along a curve, we usually use either the tangential normal direct, uh, coordinate systems or the polar coordinate systems or cylindrical coordinate systems by another name. In the tangential normal coordinate systems, we have some information about the path, either the radius of that path or the uh, expression for that path in terms of x and y coordinates. In that case, we've got the tangential coordinate that moves along, tangent to the path, and we have the normal coordinate that moves towards the center of curvature of the path. We can sum forces in each of those directions and set that equal to the mass times the acceleration in that direction. Right, the tangential acceleration is the first time derivative of the velocity, and the normal acceleration, or the centripetal acceleration, is the velocity squared divided by rho, where rho is the radius of curvature. In the polo polar or cylindrical coordinate system, we are typically dealing with information about rotation in terms of a change in angle. In that case, we've got the radial direction, which points out from the center, uh, through the point of interest, and we've got the theta direction, which is in the direction of that change in rotation. We can sum our forces in those two directions, and set those equal to mass times the acceleration in those directions, and our acceleration in those directions are given by these expressions. We also have a z-direction in this notation where um, the acceleration in the z direction is the second der time derivative of the position in the z direction, which is exactly like what we had in the rectangular coordinate system.